We think of milk in stores to be common to everyday life, but it was not that long ago milk needed to be delivered directly to your house instead of being picked up along with your regular groceries. So how did milk get to be where it is today? During the agriculture or Neolithic revolution around 10,000 BC, cows and other livestock started becoming domesticated all around the world. Originally for meat, animals started being milked around 4,000 to 3,000 BC with evidence showing up in pottery shards and ancient Sumerian and Egyptian culture. Cheap, Goats, water buffalo, reindeer, and camels followed soon thereafter as dairy-producing livestock. Initially, this unpasteurized milk was not very safe to drink by modern standards, but in many places it was still better than the local water, which often carried several more diseases like cholera and parasitic infections. Around 200 BC, non-dairy milk, plant milk, started appearing on the scene. Soy, almond, and rice milk were all alternatives, though none particularly appetizing until the 1900s, nor mainstream until the 2000s. However, it did find its use as it kept longer than traditional animal milk. Almond milk in particular became a staple of kitchens from the 5th century to the 15th century AD. Milk was often delivered several times a day. A farmer would milk their livestock, go around their towns, and deliver it to people via ceramic jars. Each person only took as much milk as they could use, as milk did tend to spoil within a few hours. African tribes eventually developed methods of safely turning spoiled milk into cheese, like cottage cheese, and Asians developed butters. It wasn't until the 1500s that cow's milk surpassed sheep's milk in popularity and started finding much wider uses than drinking. Milk and milk products appeared in several ancient religious texts around the world. Milk was not always a drink of choice, however, as alcohol reigned supreme for the majority of human civilization. Alcohol proved to be much safer than any other drink available, but was far less potent than we know it today. Because of this alcoholic influence, milk was known as the virtuous white liquor. But as farms moved further away from houses, it became evident that milk was no longer as safe to drink as alcohol. In steps Louis Pasteur. In 1864, milk finally became safe to drink and to transport. Louis Pasteur developed and named the process of making milk safe to drink, pasteurization. The milk would be heated up to just below boiling temperature to kill the bacteria. Heated to the point of boiling starts the curdling process and can make milk a bit chunky. Curdled milk you cannot eat or drink directly, but it's very useful for making cheeses. This is also possible for non-dairy milks. Pasteurization comes in many forms, but generally requires a great deal of heat for a very short amount of time. Along with other technology and the Industrial Revolution, pasteurization improved the shelf life of milk. In 1785, milk was starting to be delivered in glass bottles instead of in ceramics or copper jars, despite the first patent not being officially filed until 1884. And what was once a several times a day trip became a once a day trip all the way to today where it's potentially once or twice a month trip. Some types of pasteurized milk last upward of nine months. With the population boom of the 20th century, more efficient methods of milk transport were necessary. Homogenization appeared in 1899 to create a method where the cream would not separate and rise to the top by reducing the size of the fat particles, making milk easier to both use and drink. Milk tanker trucks appeared in 1914, and with refrigeration, the delivery was easier than before. The iconic square milk jug first took to the stage in the 1950s, making pre-made cartons easier to transport, but would not see mainstream use until glass bottles fell out of favor. In 1967, DuPont introduced selling milk bags. This was preferable to the old glass bottle, being far less fragile, lighter, easier to portion in packaging, more sanitary, and allowed milk to be more easily stored in pitchers and jugs for easy pouring. They found good use in the Baltic countries, Eastern Europe, South America, India, Israel, South Africa, and Canada. At the same time, milk bags had to compete with the sturdier plastic milk jugs and specially coated paper cartons, which were easier to sort and stack without the issue of putting pressure on the milk or milk containers. However, as late as 1975, the majority of the milk in the United Kingdom was in glass bottles, initially rejecting the carton and bag options. Today, milk is found primarily in jugs around the world, with exceptions of a few countries, like Canada, still using the bags. As plastic jugs grew in popularity in grocery stores and refrigeration became more effective, milk delivery started becoming obsolete and disappeared. The old style of delivering milk to the front or back door of a house was no more in wealthy Western countries, with only 0.4% of people in the United States alone having their milk delivered. 
Today, the majority of delivered milk is through large trucks, bringing milk from the farms to the factories, while most purchased milk comes from the grocery store or marketplace. The European Union collectively is the largest producer of milk worldwide. However, the top five producing individual countries are as follows. India, the United States of America, China, Pakistan, and Russia. And 85% of the world's milk is from cows. Milk has found several uses, from milkshakes to cream, cheese, and even a Japanese beer called Bilk. Found in cooking and meals all around the world, it's difficult to avoid milk, and it affects our daily life. This is only a short origin of the history of milk, and its impact across time and cultures is too vast to fit into one short video. Perhaps it really is the virtuous white liquor, after all. I hope you guys enjoyed the history of milk. If you did, please consider subscribing and sharing with your friends, and I'll see you guys next time on Where Is It From? All the sources for everything I mentioned in this video are down below in the description if you want to read more about milk. And as always, don't forget to be awesome. That is DFTBA.